Good morning, folks. Starting off with some disappointing news. Yesterday, I got Western Hemisphere observers excited with the potential for a visible eclipse this weekend. If you live somewhere here, I was telling you you're going to get to see it, but I was wrong. It was pointed out in the comments section yesterday that this eclipse is an academic interest only. It will be visually imperceptible due to the slight entrance of Luna into Earth's shadow. But I can't help but think that if some of you with good scopes take some time lapses of the moon, you might not catch something. Apologies for that confusion. Getting some more bad news out of the way, about a quarter million liters of oil have leaked at the Jackson Oil Field in Queensland. We'll shift immediately to some cooler stuff. Linked for you are terrific articles and animations of colliding galaxies and how that forms the elliptical ones. First watching is the star simulation. We'll follow that up by a red dust only version of the galactic collision simulation. Central Pacific Hurricane Outlook courtesy of NOAA. Link is below if you're interested. Personally, I think NASA's Earth Observatory outdid themselves here. Probably some of the most impressive visual spectrum images they've ever shown us. Solar wind telemetry from ACE. Between 20 and 2100 UTC yesterday, the solar wind metrics changed drastically. Density and speed dropped to the floor, way below average. While the temperature below in green shows the slow, sparse particles ramped from the thousands of degrees Kelvin to the tens of thousands. Magnetics remain calm, but the plasma immediately began dodging our shield and is penetrating in a significant way. By that time of day, though, we were busy with a huge eruption in M5 Hyder Flare from a departing active region on the northwestern limb. It caused a bit of a stir. Every flare detector and metric used to gauge them was offline for the event. They all bounced back nicely, however. Now look top right. You see an eruption come off the backside before the major eruption of focus for us, almost like an inflating balloon is let go just behind the limb. Then the M5 eruption. This is important to distinct because the first CME does not appear Earth directed, but the second one does. You gotta separate the two. All those particles you see hitting the camera were integrated into the magnetic connection between Earth and Sun, arrived way faster than a CME, and are causing major energetic flux at the Earth system, currently putting us in a serious radiation storm. ISS crew taking high doses now, along with all airline passengers at high latitude. This was much bigger, they might start rerouting polar flights. Coming back to SOHO for the CME tracking, you should see ejecta leaving all sides of the disk, although it is much fainter to the left. This indicates Earth will be impacted, and that's exactly what NASA's endless spiral shows, with a distinct impact to the yellow dot. Earth is the green dot here, and NOAA agrees, specifies an impact Friday evening. Spots on this side have been quiet, even with the large umbras on top. They are struggling to mix polarities. Same is true on the south, but at least the north edge of the backside is trying. Umbral field is wide open. You remember from yesterday, the northern coronal hole faces us now, but the equatorial one waits on the eastern limb. Speaking of the eastern limb, the filament we identified yesterday didn't like being stared at very much and, without producing a CME, released gently into the corona. We got heavy looping turning in with the filament lateral at their northern edge. Got some other shots of our star to close, including more Hyder Flare close-ups. Eyes open. No fear. 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.